Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be showing you guys how I customized this full lace frontal wig that I received from Wow African Hair. I've been getting so many questions about this wig and this is my first time customizing a full lace wig so of course I wanted to show you guys the process and also what not to do and mistakes to avoid because I did make a few I decided to include them in this video as well just to help you guys out so we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it this is the package that I received from my African hair they did include an elastic band for extra security for the wig which I thought was really nice so that you don't have to go out and buy one and they did include a wig cap but as you guys can see that's definitely not my scalp color so I didn't use that they give you some information on the hair and how to care the hair in the brochure and they also just show you some other styles as well of wigs that they have or units that they have I see a lot of familiar faces in there so the wig that I received is a 360 full lace frontal wig which means that there is lace all throughout the perimeter of the wig going all the way to the back and I did have to bleach the knots just because they were completely black, which, I mean, that's, like, typical. And I will say that this frontal came very dense. Like, there's a lot of hair. And it comes with three combs, as you guys can see. One in the back, two at the front for, like, the sides of your hair. And then, remember, there's also the elastic band. And I'm just, like, parting through the frontal to show you guys, like, the knots and how thick it is because it's thick so now we're gonna go ahead and get into laying this wig so I'm gonna be doing the stocking cap method I'm sure by now a lot of you guys are familiar with this method so one thing I will say so for me my edges and my baby hairs come pretty far down and so for me I had to keep going back underneath the cap to like move them out the way because yeah like it, it was just annoying so I used some of the got to be glue gel just to like lay them down a little bit and like slick them so that they wouldn't keep moving because of course with the friction of the stocking cap they were going the opposite direction when I put it on and like you pull the wig cap all the way down to your ears because you have to as you guys can see it's like creeping to my eyebrows so I had to just slick that down a little bit so next you're basically just going to be applying that got to be glue gel on top of where your hairline is and a little bit in front too because the, obviously the whole point is to apply the wig a little bit in front of your hairline and after I did both sections I went in with my got to be free spray and I'm just going to spray each little like braid or section with some of that spray this is really just gonna give it that ultra hold I know I didn't really do it here but I do recommend bringing that got to be glue gel a little bit further back onto your braids that way you have a little bit more hold this was my first time customizing this full lace wig so you know like I was still getting into it I've done the method a few times but yeah also forgot to mention so this is gonna take some time to dry so I was just on my phone killing time and then once it was nice and crisp you want to wait until it's crisp you don't want it to be tacky at all then you can go ahead and just start cutting with scissors you want to be careful that you are not cutting your skin or cutting your hair because of course that would just be tragic and yeah i find it easier to cut in the middle first and then do each side than just cut around the entire perimeter because i have such a weird shaped hairline or i shouldn't say weird but i don't have a straight across hairline as you guys can see i have a widow's peak my edges come pretty far out um, towards the arch of my brows so I wasn't sure about how much you know stocking cap to really leave out and it's always better to have more than enough so you can go back in and cut off more than to cut off too much and then you know you're kind of screwed or you'd pr pretty much have to start over again and I did actually have to go back in and cut off a little bit more of those edges after taking out the wig and just seeing how it would fit on my hairline and where it would fit um, that's always good. You don't want to, you know, be like, oh damn, I cut off too much. So this part, I don't know why I used to think this part was so hard, but it's really so simple. You just cut on a slight slant up your ear. You, of course, just want to be careful that you don't cut your hair. But other than that, it's pretty simple. And so now we're going to get into what my hairline was looking like. And then I'm going to show you guys the second attempt. As you guys can see, this looks much better like much better so now we're gonna get back into laying the glue now so I'm using the ghost bond glue I've heard a lot about this I know there's the bolt hold there's the ghost bond I actually saw this at my local beauty supply store because I was hearing about this and I was like alright you know let me pick this up because got to be glue gel has not been working for me 
so yeah, and I was actually gonna order this because I have been hearing about it but once I saw it at the beauty supply store for $22 of course way better option because I would have been paying $40 including shipping to order it from Amazon I have heard that the bold hold is better for people that have tried both so I am curious into trying that one but I'm also showing you guys here that I'm applying way too much glue okay like way too much I'm gonna show you guys here how much you should apply and this just made my life so much easier the second attempt as you guys can see and also because it dries pretty quickly you want to apply a light amount and smooth it out and wait for it to dry clear and then go back in with another layer if you'd like you know of course for a more secure hold you can go in with layers but this is definitely how you want to apply it not how i applied it in the other clip but anyways i'm just going to continue showing you guys because i'm going to show you guys what happened so this is where I messed up. As you guys can see, you see where it's like thick and white on those edges. I didn't know that that was gonna turn into a disaster because this is my first time working with this glue. And those thick white pieces are again also the edges of the stocking cap that didn't lay properly, which is why it never dried clear. But I'm showing you guys here how you should be smoothing it. As you can see, I used a way lighter amount on the second attempt. And you know, just smooth it out with the end of your tail comb. Shortly after this clip, I'm going to show you guys how your glue should look once it has dried clear. You don't want any white residue to be left or any visible white residue. Just because once you apply your wig and it's there's a li any little bit of white, it's going to seep through the lace. It's not going to be flattering and it also won't have the best hold. So this is what it should look like. As you guys can see, it's pretty much clear. So like we're safe to go ahead and apply the wig so now I'm just gonna show you guys the wig where I messed up was I didn't customize it fully on the mannequin head but as you guys can already see it's a hot mess okay edges are white like I was just like I was editing this and I was like wow and I decided to keep these in so I can show you guys mistakes to avoid because i mean a lot of you guys are probably like sis what are you doing but trust me it happens especially when you you know you don't wear frontals often or do your own frontals often and this whole stocking cap method so i decided to cut off like those mucky pieces because they were not working out and then I went ahead to customize the frontal so as you guys know i have a widow's peak so i did like a little like dip that's like the best way I can describe it. I cut in those parts a little bit more and I'm just continuing to cut any of those stringy pieces. Before we get into further customization of the wig, I wanted to show you guys a proper fitting and application of the actual lace onto the stocking cap. So here we go. So I'm just pulling that wig down to basically as far as I can without having the widow's peak area too far down on my forehead. Again, because, you know, my hairline isn't straight across. So I had to keep in mind of that. And I'm actually going in with tweezers. This actually made it a lot easier, but you want to be careful not to tear your lace with the tweezers, of course. So as you guys can see, a little bit of my baby hairs were left out. It's not too noticeable, but I did notice after that okay like i should have covered that up a little bit more but it was okay for me because it wasn't too noticeable and i still had the baby hairs to customize so it would be covering them anyways and i kind of already knew that that was going to happen just because i know how my hairline is and i know with frontals it's you know yeah like it happened so but anyways when laying that lace i like to press my nails into that glue i don't like to get my fingers in it because it gets really mucky or you can also use a comb like i am doing here so we're just going to bring it back to the first video i filmed with the yellow backdrop to show that after laying the wig you want to go in with some alcohol to clean up that glue and I want you guys to keep in mind that the setting with the yellow backdrop was when it didn't go as well. And now I'm just going to show you guys the hairline because although, I mean, the application didn't go as well, I think the hairline was looking pretty well. I didn't see any lace. I still feel like my edges were a little bit, you know, you can see like where my edges, my baby hairs are kind of peeking out. 
um, on the first attempt but other than that I think the lace was looking pretty good so now we're gonna get into customizing that hairline cutting some sideburns and just overall plucking and thinning this frontal out because as you guys can see it's very thick so I'm just going in and cutting off any extra lace that's hovering over my ear And the next I'm going to go in with this Lotta Body Coconut and Shea Oil Foaming Mousse. I'm basically just applying this to the frontal just so that it's easier for me to customize and tweeze it. Typically when I see tutorials on people customizing their frontals, it's usually wet. So that's why I decided to do this. I know they usually have it wet with water like right after bleaching the knots and washing the frontal. Or they just go ahead and apply foaming mousse like how I did. Now, of course, because the foaming mousse is water-based, you just want to be careful not to get it directly on the lace where you applied the adhesive because, of course, that would be wetting it and then you would kind of, you know, make it loose. So now I'm just going ahead and parting sections and I'm going to start tweezing. And let me just say I was tweezing for quite some time. When I tell you guys this frontal is thick, like she thick, like there's a lot, a lot of hair in this frontal. So I think I was tweezing... I want to say for about half an hour honestly also because I didn't want to over tweeze so I would you know part sections tweeze and just look over it and see you know if that section was good and then move on to the next section after Also, you especially want to make sure you tweeze more so like the top area of the frontal really well just so that, you know, depending on whatever style you do, whether it's side part or middle part, you want it to lay nice and flat. Of course, if it's way too dense, it's going to look bulky and it's also going to make your head look bigger and give you that wiggish look. And of course, that's not the look that, you know, any of us want to go for. So... It is smarter to customize and tweeze the wig on a mannequin head rather than going ahead and just be constantly pulling at it like I have been. Um, I mean, it didn't really come loose from doing that, but you want to avoid doing that. So you're just better off customizing it on the mannequin head before actually laying it down. And, you know, just things to avoid again. So what I decided to do next was go in and actually flat iron the hair. The hair is already naturally straight, but as you guys can see, it's definitely not actually like bone straight. And this is going to help to see how thick the hair really is after being styled and heat applied. So then I can, you know, go back in and customize it again after. It was just really overwhelming with all this hair on my head. So I just feel like straightening hair while you're trying to style it just gives you more guidance. So I'm using my Baby Bliss Pro Nano Titanium Flat Iron and I'm using it on either 410 or 415 degrees. Guys, this straightener is bomb. It's my favorite straightener. I've mentioned this before in previous videos. It's pretty pricey. I believe it's like 120 or 140 dollars on Amazon. Luckily, something told me to go to Marshalls and check because I know Marshalls has a lot of styling tools. And I found it for $39.99. So... <laughs> I'm just showing you guys how long the hair is. It's 22 inches, but I don't remember ever having 22 inches that 
was this long on me I don't know and it's definitely past my butt it actually sits halfway past my butt so it's like right in the middle it's pretty long so <laughs> But I do know that that is because I'm petite and I also have a pretty small torso. I'm only five feet. So, of course, depending on your height, you know, different lengths of hair will hit you different areas. It's not going to be the same for everybody. So I'm just going to continue to flat iron this hair. It did take me, I want to say, like half an hour, 45 minutes because I wanted to get it bone straight. I did um, pretty small sections because, of course, this is the first time I'm applying heat to it and I wanted it to be bone straight and i was feeling it this hair straightens really well and it was super super soft um not to mention it was already co-washed because as i previously mentioned in this tutorial i did bleach the knots so of course after bleaching the knots i just washed it with some shampoo and some conditioner So after straightening it, this is what it looks like. Nice and bone straight, nice and silky. I'm gonna go in with that foaming mousse again. I'm gonna apply this to the top of the frontal and the edges and like the sides. And I'm applying this to get rid of any flyaways. As you guys can see, there's like a few little hairs sticking up. You're bound to always get flyaways when customizing frontals because you are, you know, like breaking hair follicles and tweezing hair and stuff like that throughout this entire wig application in both settings like this initial video and the second one that I filmed I was still going in and tweezing and tweezing and tweezing because I was still getting used to the customization process and I felt like there was always something to go back in and customize because when I tell you guys this frontal is like it's thick I'm just gonna go ahead and cut sideburns on the other side now and I mean I didn't do a bad job but I mean sideburns definitely aren't that long I left them for a little bit and I went in to customize them again so how you guys see me customizing it and leaving it is not the finished product I was just of course still getting used to doing sideburns so I also wanted to share that I'm not using regular scissors I'm using I think they're called they're not called clippers, but you guys know those scissors that have the razor and like the shears on it that work for layering. Those are the scissors that I'm using. They are so much better when trying to thin out and like layer hair because it just makes it less time consuming and it makes it easier to thin out the hair. So now we're gonna go back to the second setting and I'm showing you guys that I'm still customizing and tweezing this frontal and I also went back in to customize those sideburns. So I'm just gonna let you guys see that and then when we get into doing the baby hairs and laying, you know, just making everything look nice and sleek, I will be back. To lay those baby hairs, I'm going to be using the Got To Be Ultra Glued, the black one, and this has been by far my favorite product to use for laying baby hairs. So I'm just going to use my toothbrush and lightly swoop those hairs. And what this does is also help to hide any lace that may be showing, and you want to give it that like natural swoop. So that's why I'm going in so much and so repetitively because, you know, like you don't want the baby hairs to look forced. And I'm also just customizing the baby hairs for the other side as well. 
as you guys can see i'm also applying some of that gel to the front of the hair like not just on the baby hairs and edges but like actually where like the part is and what this is going to do is give it that really nice and sleek and fresh look like that fresh perm look when i apply heat to it as you guys are going to see in just a bit and i learned this from so Shar. she has amazing tutorials on frontals like she's just bomb so i always watch her tutorials and i noticed that she adds some product to the edges as well and it really it really just brings a look all together after customizing the baby hairs this is what it's looking like um and i didn't notice until after <laughs> that my part was slightly crooked or like slanted it really isn't that big of a deal for me because honestly i wasn't going anywhere but of course if your part isn't straight all you have to do is go in with your comb and just clean up that part so next i'm going to take my curling wand and i'm going to run that heat over where we applied all those products and that is going to give it that really sleek and shiny look another alternative is a hot comb which actually might even be better because you'd be able to part sections in the hair and really flatten it out but of course i didn't have a hot comb so i'm using a curling wand and it, honestly it works just as good like when i say this really gives it that look like this really just brings it all together so the last step is tying that hairline down or that lace down. I'm using the wrap styling strips. You can get these at your local beauty supply store. And it's a paper, as you guys can see, but it's very stretchy. And I know a lot of professionals use this. This is how I started using it because my hairstylist that I go to sometimes uses this when she does my frontals. And it really just melts everything in. So I'm tying down my frontal with this. You can use a head tie as well. I just really like how this works with the frontal and the products because it like seeps everything in. Literally makes it look like scalp. So and you can keep this tied down for as long as you like. I recommend keeping it tied down for at least a minimum of 10 minutes just for the best results. And once you take it off, you get that fresh permed look. And you guys, this is the finished look of the frontal. Again, I feel like I could have done better with the edges, like bringing it a little bit further down. But other than that, I think I did an amazing job on this frontal. So let me know what you guys think. I really hope this tutorial was helpful, especially showing you guys where I messed up and mistakes to avoid. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.